Howdy, folks. The fun never ends with this stuff, does it? Word of warning to anybody thinking of doing Ashen's parodies. They really do get addictive. This, this review format just sucks you right in. <laughs> so, as a hopeless addict, or at least someone who has found a whole bunch of more stuff to make fun of, it's plaid sofa time once again. Now, last time we took a look at some lovey-dovey nature lover macaroni and cheese. And remember last time I talked about how, hey, it's not the whole grain brown noodles, even though it's all natural and stuff like that? Well, I went back to Dollar Tree, did some more digging, and it exists. Back to nature, whole grain macaroni and cheese, microwavable dinner. I apparently need new glass. Oh, wait, 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 new product. New, and as usual, no artificial preservatives or flavors. There actually is a whole grain pasta version of this. So I am not looking forward to this, especially when I'm gonna try and have lunch with this kind of stuff, because I don't like wasting food. You know, I'm not gonna be like the good doctor with the Poundland Instant Cupcake and just toss it in the trash, or anything in the trash for that matter, because wasting food is terrible. I mean, there's people starving in the streets and in poor countries and things like that, and I don't know. So let's see how terrible this really is. Now, I am not looking forward to this because I've tried whole grain healthy pasta before, and the last time I tried any of this, it tasted like cereal with the texture of spaghetti. So, don't know how, how much that, that was years ago though. Maybe things have improved since then. And even back then, that was job lot pasta that I was messing around with. Ah, the things you'll do in college on a shoestring budget. <clears throat> and now that I'm totally showing my age here, let's check this out. First, I should have paid more attention in the store because there's little dings from razor cuts or something like that. I don't know. I just hope this thing is still safe to eat. Well, if you see my obituary in the paper later on, you'll know what happened. Now, something I forgot to bring up last time in the cooking instructions, which are the same for these as they are for the other ones, Caution, cup and contents will be very hot. Keep cup upright to avoid spills. So you heard it from them first, folks. Do not juggle these things after they come out of the microwave. <laughs> so, okay, let's, let's quit trying to dig up bad jokes from this stuff. We already know what this is about. And the sheer irony that this all natural, you know, feed your nature lover side type stuff comes in a plastic -y container, which I'm guessing is not biodegradable. Ah, oh, the trees are weeping, the trees are weeping. What do we got under the lid? As I expected, ooh, mysterious white powder. But it says that's, but don't forget, the thing says that's totally normal. Yeah, significantly darker noodles this time. The question is, how much do they taste like cereal when you heat them up? And of course, natural white cheddar. So let's cook this correctly this time. And I'm going to toss the cheese packet over there and actually walk away from the camera with this thing to not make it the wrong way again like I did last time. See you in three and a half minutes! <laughs> And we're back, and the lap desk is back too, which I wonder if I'll ever get to use as a lap desk ever again, but as you can see, this packet has remained unopened, so I actually cooked it right this time. I had a hard time getting the microwave door open. I don't know if the hinge is starting to go, or maybe the thing's become sentient, and it's, the, and it's like, dude, Jay, don't put that in there. You don't want to eat this thing. <laughs> Ugh, well, if my microwave is smarter than I am, I give it kudos. Let's add some more mysterious white powder, which I unfortunately happen to know is white cheddar cheese powder stuff, and give it a good stir, and hope that this is cool enough to eat shortly. Stir, stir, what an exciting video. Well, it's been blending in quite nicely now. But, I can tell from how hot it is that it is still outrageously too hot to eat. Let's toss it in the freezer for a bit to speed up the cool-down process. Doesn't it say let cool for two minutes? No! Nowhere in there. 
Nowhere in there does it say let it cool, even though it says warning, the cup's extremely hot. Yeah, ready in three and a half minutes, excluding cooling time. But the pasta doesn't look as dark as the last whole grain pasta I tried. Maybe they fixed the taste issue. We'll see. If this tastes like bran flakes with cheese added, then we'll know they haven't. Into the freezer with this to speed up the cooldown process. Jump cut. Well, unfortunately, the refrigerator doesn't seem to want to cooperate. As usual, whenever I need it to actually cool something really quickly, it's not running. And then when I'm trying to film something, like I am right now, it fires up probably in the middle of the shot. I may have just jinxed myself. But anywho, I hope this has cooled down at least a little. Otherwise, I may have to go to the hospital. Ah, second degree burns on my tongue! Come on now, I don't want to burn my tongue too much. Thanksgiving's next week. I want to actually be able to have Thanksgiving dinner. Back to nature, whole grain. Does this taste like cereal or not? In three, two, one, go. Hmm. Nice. Indeed. They have improved it. Superb! Thumbs up. Got it to fit in the shot. The cereal taste of these noodles is gone. There's a bit of a cereal-like aftertaste, but at least you don't feel like you're eating, like, bran flakes with cheese on them. Cheese, still weak, white cheddar, blah type stuff. It's not that tongue-assaulting orange stuff like what you would normally get from this kind of stuff. 22% of your day's sodium. What makes this whole grain, I wonder? Whole durum wheat flour, durum wheat, semolina, etc., etc., etc. I don't know. But it's edible. And if someone, if you're on a shoestring budget or one of those portion diets where you want to have everything in the proper portions, here's a portion. <laughs> and this is what a portion looks like. Let's finish this sucker off camera. And, oh, there goes the fridge. Did I call it or what? <laughs> Let's finish this, this little doodad off camera and move on to our next macaroni and cheese ball because yes, folks, there's another one. Mommy, mommy, I finished all the food on my plate. Can I have seconds, please? Well, this time, of course, the plate was a microwavable cup thing. But anyways, I was a bit wrong about the cereal taste, aftertaste thingy in that whole grain pasta. It didn't hit your tongue at once, but as you eat through more of one of those things, it starts building up. But the good news is they've improved it at least a little. Last time I tried whole grain pasta, BAM! Right off the bat. It was like you were eating cereal flavored spaghetti. So maybe in a couple more years, whole grain pasta won't taste as much like bran flakes. But, there's my whole grains for the day. Let's have some more traditional mac and cheese from our lovely friends at the dollar store with Loretta Deluxe Mac and Cheese Cup. I don't know what makes macaroni and cheese deluxe, especially in a cheese ball cup like that. Microwavable macaroni and cheese dinner. Oh yeah, because I totally want to stick this thing on my stove. Ugh, I gotta stop wearing that out. I'm ruining all these perfectly good bad jokes here. Bonus, 75% more compared to two... Uh, 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 yeah, sure. Packed by weight and not by volume. <laughs> maybe, that, maybe that's what the 75% more is. Or maybe they just made the uh, cheese packet a little heavier. But this is the Dollar Store's little brand of macaroni and cheese. And if you don't want to buy it in the cups like this, you can also get traditional boxes of this type of stuff. But I decided to be lazy and get the Easy Mac style microwavable thingamabob. What's it got? Bechtrom Foods Incorporated. Keep kids safe. Cup and contents will be very hot. Again, assuming that this kind of stuff is kitty food. So when the uh, two income family mom or dad or whoever runs through the door, it's like, oh, where's supper? Where's supper? Where's supper? Coming right up, kids. As they pop a few pills for their headache from work and. Uh, Decide, you know what? I'll try real cooking again next time I get a day off, if I ever get a day off. Okay, this isn't about working class rants here or whatever, but all right, Loretta, deluxe mac and cheese cups, blah bitty blah bitty. What do we got for sodium? Uh, servings per container is one, so that's good, and 23%. So that's good. A slightly bigger cup that you eat four of them and you get your day's salt from. And the lid thing says cheesiest. 
Don't they all say that? Oh no, it says cheesiest cheese. Oh, cheesiest, 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 cheesiest. Distributed by Bechtrom Foods Incorporated, North Dakota. <laughs> well, gee, well, gee, that's quite North Dakota. What do you know? Once they get the roads plowed out from all the snow, they ship thingies and macaroni and cheese to dollar stores. I don't want to know how their supply chain works. Directions. <clears throat> Remove lid, set aside. What, you're gonna need the lid again later on? It's just a piece of plastic. Why does it say, why doesn't it say remove lid discard? Add water to fill lining cup. Stir, duh, microwave, uncovered on high, three and a half minutes until pasta is tender. Do not drain, stir and let cool until cheese sauce thickens. Cup and contents will be very hot. Keep cup upright to avoid skill, uh, spills. <laughs> avoid skills. <laughs> I don't know if you have much skill to begin with if this is all you can cook. Looking in the mirror as I say that. Do not leave microwave unattended. Do not reuse cup. So again, don't juggle it. <laughs> it's kind of like the cheesy macaroni and cheese cup version of the sad onion. Let's toss this in. No, no, no. Let's take a look at it. Let's quit being lazy and at least peel the lid off to reveal a big chunk of cheese. They didn't even put a packet thing in this. Like, heck with that. Dump the stuff in. <laughs> Less plastic for whoever buys this to have to mess with, but you know, toolless, you know, like toolless, um, toolless service of appliances or something, and it falls right apart. Okay, well, at least uh, we know that we don't have to worry about whether we add the cheese thingy packet before or after it cooks, so let's quit blowing this off and toss it in the microwave for three and a half minutes. Yay! Thumbs up. <laughs> A barrage of oranges and reds awaited me when I opened the door to the microwave, probably because I didn't stir this thing enough before I started cooking it. Something else worth noting, the fill line for the water is notably higher in this than in most mac and cheese cups I know of. So this thing actually looked like cheese soup when it came out, but unfortunately, the sauce is starting to thicken a bit, the noodles are fully coated, and it might start looking like macaroni and cheese. And in a minute or two, and there goes the fridge again. Not cooperating, not running when I need to cool something off really quickly, but then firing back up automatically the minute I start the camera again. Okie dokie. Well, heck with the fridge. I hope I don't burn my tongue out and ruin my Thanksgiving. Let's see what this stuff tastes like. Loretta mac and cheese from North Dakota. I don't know the Midwestern accent at all, so I'm not even gonna pretend. Or uh, upper Midwestern, whatever it is. Snow country, there we go. <laughs> well, anyway, we had snow here too. Okay, let's quit blowing it off. In three, two, one. Hmm. Let's have one more mouthful just for good measure. Not as hot as I thought it would be. Well, once again, they should put the cheese in quotation marks. <laughs> well, ah, I keep forgetting how much this stuff sticks to your teeth. Despite this being more traditional orange macaroni and cheese, I am not seeing the same kind of assault your tongue with cheesiness dash saltiness flavor from this stuff that I'd see from even store brand stuff in supermarkets. But what do you expect for a dollar? But it at least tastes a bit like cheese. So, uh, it's doable. If, if you're on a budget and you want something that somewhat tastes like macaroni and cheese, this should do the trick. Maybe I should try the boxed mac and cheese that these folks make, see if it's any better than these noodle cups. But I'd say the original non-whole grain, uh, non-whole grain back to nature noodle thingy that we uh, did last video is probably the cheesiest out of these three. But this one's bigger! <laughs> okay, let's finish this one up off camera and wrap things up. But wait! There's more! Of course, after a nice hearty meal of microwavable macaroni and cheese cups... Uh, you gotta wash it down with something. So what better thing to wash it down with than also from our lovely dollar store, Dad's Root Beer. 
No, I'm not saying go steal your father's drink. <clears throat> if he's drinking root beer, the brand, you know, America's premium root beer? Huh, yeah, really. One liter, big daddy size, which I have to turn sideways to show you that indeed is a bottle. Who makes this stuff? <laughs> Ingredients, hot water, high fructose corn syrup, uh-oh, poison. <laughs> Actually, it is one of those sugary root beers, but at least it's caffeine free. But 29 grams of sugar, ugh. That, that, I can, <laughs> that's not good. Definitely not gonna drink this stuff too often. What else can I say? It, it, and they try to do the whole glass bottle thing on a plastic bottle with a little engraved or bumpy logo thingy something. Who is it made by copyright 2000? No, 2009. The Dad's Root Beer Company, LLC. Produced under the authority of The Dad's Root Beer Company, Jasper, Indiana. Well, I'm glad to be supporting good old-fashioned U.S. jobs here. The Dad's Root Beer Company. Wonder who the dad is. <laughs> ah, knock the tripod again. Well, now that everybody's getting cameras sick, let's drink this stuff. Now, some now cheap root beer at its worst is like it tastes kind of like mouthwash. As a matter of fact, some folks in Europe won't even drink root beer because of said resemblance to bland mouthwash. Good root beer doesn't taste like that. Let's see where this falls on the spectrum, keeping in mind it is from the dollar store. In three, two, one, bottoms up. Oh, <laughs> Warning to anybody from continental Europe who thinks that who thinks that American root beer is quote unquote toothpaste drink? Don't drink this stuff. <laughs> Another sip for the road. Oh, they swear there's no booze in this. I'm just doing this laughing and thin whatever thing for comedic effect. <laughs> I should chug this thing, see how quickly I can down the thing. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I'd say people that hate root beer because they think it tastes too much like bland mouthwash will have a lot to be mad about with this stuff. It does taste somewhat like root beer, but it's a far cry from your mugs or your ANWs, that's for sure. <laughs> and this is supposed to be, maybe that's what old-fashioned root beer really is all about here. But let's just say I've had sweeter root beer than this. This is probably some of the more bitter stuff that I've ever tasted. Hence the reference to bland mouthwash. Because, yeah. So if you're from continental Europe, you're going to want to steer clear of this stuff. <laughs> but, yeah, big daddy size. At least it's one liter. I am not going to finish the rest of this off camera because I feel like saving this for whenever I actually feel like drinking it or something like that. But anyways, that about wraps up the plaid sofa stuff for now. I realize we didn't get around to having dessert, but this video is long enough as it is, so tune in next time! Till next time, this is Multimedia J signing off. Bon appetit, and thanks for stopping by!